honor his name. I dare you to point up and say, Lord, all glory belongs to you. Now, somebody that really been through something, open up your mouth and say, all glory belongs to you. God, we come on, put your hands on it in this place. We honor your presence in this house. Nobody but you has authority in this place, and we honor you for who you are. So come on, y'all sing this right here. Glory, glory, glory to our King.
mouth and cry out glory to his name. Come on, somebody open up your mouth and give him praise in this place. We call him King of Kings. And we call him Lord of Lords. And we declare that there was no one like you in this place. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. And every man will bow down and say you are king. Come on, lift your hands. So let's start right now. you want to be with them just want to be with you
come on, point to yourself, King of Glory. King of Glory, fill this place. Yeah, He dwells within. King of Glory, say. He's here to fill our heart. King of glory, say, fill this place. The King of love will fill this place. Fill this place. King of glory, say. Worship in his presence. Worship in his presence. Hallelujah. The King of Glory is here. He's here to bless. He's here to deliver. He's here to heal. He's here to set free. Hallelujah. 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 One last time. Just give him glory in this place. Come on, do better, do better. Open up your mouth and give him real glory in this place. God, we honor you. And when I ask you to come in, I'm not necessarily talking about this building. Lord, I want you to feel this place, my temple. I need you to come in because I want to commune with you. I want to sit with you. I want to spend time with you. So, Lord, we need you to come in and fill this place and remove everything that is not of you. Fill every void, every place that is empty. Pour yourself in right now. We give you glory. We give you honor in advance. Somebody put those hands together as you take your seats and give God a praise in this house. Quickly, quickly, do we have any first-time visitors in this house this morning? Don't be ashamed. Don't be shy. Just wave. Come on, y'all. Let's give it up for her. any other first-time visitors. Well, that's it. Remain standing. We're going to come around and show you just a little love. We want to throw our arms around you and tell you it's good to see you here at New Home Family Worship Center. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, y'all. Go show us some love this morning. Whee! Come on, somebody help me about it this morning. Come on. Come on. Wrap your arms around him, around him celebration of and praise. Come on and greet somebody. Wrap your arms around him, him celebration of and praise. Come on and greet somebody. Wrap your arms around him, celebration of and praise. Somebody open up your mouth and give God a praise in this place. Everyone may be seated as we receive our video announcements. Hallelujah. Family, these are your announcements for the week. Come out and join us for our midweek worship services. Each Wednesday, you can worship with us at 11.15 a.m. or 6.45 p.m. for one hour of praise, worship, and the word. This is your now season, so make plans to be there and invite someone. If you made a monthly pledge for Feed the Homeless, 
Your payment is due to Sister Athea Taylor on the first Sunday of each month. Thanks so much for your support and commitment to the Feed the Homeless ministry. Attention all new members. New members class is held each third and fourth Sunday immediately following service in the small chapel. You will receive a certificate of completion once you have satisfied all requirements. If you have any questions or need additional information, please see Elder Shanita Newman. The Free Spirit Women of Victory will hold their annual Women's Spring Revival on March 19th through the 21st. The theme for the revival is Abiding in the Secret Place. The revival will be held at the Uptown location on March 19th and 21st and at the East location on March 20th. Classes will begin at 6 p.m. nightly, followed by service at 7 p.m. The Free Spirit Women of Victory, under the leadership of Executive Pastor Lois Blaze, is holding a Women's Leadership Workshop luncheon on Saturday, March 30th at the Holiday Inn on the West Bank. The theme for the luncheon is Women in Leadership. The cost is only $30 and there is limited seating available. Please stop by the membership table for more information. Ladies of New Home East, our March Fellowship is on March 31st. Our theme is A Day with Our Youth. In an effort to fulfill our outreach ministry and fellowship with our youth, we will provide them with mid-year school supplies and a light lunch following service. If you plan to attend and participate in the outreach with our youth, please pay a $10 registration fee by Sunday, March 17th. This fee covers food and supplies for you and the youth. Youth who plan to attend must also register at the membership table. There is no cost for the youth to attend. Plans for the annual fish fry are now underway. The fish fry will take place on Good Friday, April 19th from 11 to 2 p.m. Proceedings will go towards Pastor's Aid Ministry. Anyone interested in assisting with the fish fry in any manner, please see Sister Beverly Trustclair or Sister Deborah Dozer. Tickets are now on sale at the membership table for $10. Please mark your calendars. The deadline to apply for this year's scholarship award is Sunday, May 5th. Applications can only be submitted electronically. Please visit rcblakescholar.com for details to apply. Our annual scholarship gala will be held Friday, June 21st at the Hyatt Hotel, starting at 7 p.m. Tickets are $100 each. Please stay tuned for more event details. Registration is open for the FOCFI 2K19 Holy Convocation, where our theme is Game Changer. It's happening June 18th through the 20th at the Punta Train Center. Registration is only $99 general admission or $119 for VIP. Go to www.focfi.org to register. Ladies, 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 are you ready for the 2019 Free Spirit Women of Victory Retreat? Join us October 9th through the 12th, 2019 for the Holy Land Experience. For more information, please see our representative following service today. Are you looking to get active in ministry? Well, we need you. Join one of these dynamic teams, the birthday celebration, the Good Friday Fish Fry, Easter celebration, pastor's anniversary, or the senior graduation recognition. All you have to do is stop by the membership table if you're interested in working in any one of these teams. Calling all business owners. The Free Spirit Women of Victory is partnering with businesses that are interested in sponsorship. Don't miss this opportunity to advertise or promote your business. Spots are limited, so stop by the membership table for more details. We would like to wish a happy birthday to all of our members celebrating a birthday in the month of March. These are all of your announcements for New Home East New Orleans. Thanks for watching. See you at the top. Come on, clap your hands and give the Lord one more praise. Well, we're getting ready to honor the Lord and now we're giving. Clap your hands all over the house. It's giving time in the house of the Lord as we are preparing to give and sow into the house of the Lord. How many tithers are with us this morning? Lift your hand. Look at them. They're all by the door. Lift your hands, all tithers. 
we bless the Lord for you. We're going to give and God's going to prosper us. How many believe this is your greatest season of prosperity? I know it is for me as you give. You position yourself to be the recipient of the greatest prosperity you've ever had in your life. Our wonderful team, our staff, they're moving around the sanctuary to serve you. Those who need envelopes, lift your hands up. Certainly do not forget um, the love offering envelopes. Make sure you are being a blessing and planting and sowing. I'm going to ask, and I know I don't have to ask because we are well disciplined enough, but those of us who will do it, if we need you to do that corporate seed. Uh, today, uh, God doesn't count numbers. He makes numbers count. But if we do this consistently, uh, then there will never be any shortage, any lapse, or any gap in anything that we do. Those of you who need to give via credit card or debit card, we have our uh, station set up in the rear of the sanctuary. Uh, you can begin to move now. Only persons are moving are those who are serving and those who are giving electronically. You can make your way to the rear of the sanctuary this morning as we are prepared anybody expecting a real harvest to come into your life i'm really i am i got up this morning feeling like a great harvest uh, was going to come into my life as you're preparing your seed i want you to get those of you who can get that 42 dollars seed you say bishop i just can't do that but i'm going to give the very best i can today whether that's 40 whether that's 38 whether that's two dollars you're getting the best seed possible in your hand and we're honoring the Lord with the first fruits of all of our increase. As you are preparing your tithe, I'm going to give you another 30 seconds or so. And then I'm going to ask the tithers to join me uh, at the front of the sanctuary as we pronounce the Lord's blessing upon your life. Hallelujah. Come on, you got to sound like you're excited. Are you excited about giving? I'm excited. Giving is God's way. He, it's an opportunity for God to show himself strong and mighty relative to your economics and your financial affairs in your life. Again, if you need to give via credit card or debit card, you can make your way to the rear of the sanctuary at this time. All tithers, would you join me really quickly? Make your way to the front of the sanctuary because we're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. Any way you cut it, we're just blessed. Come on, come on.
Amen. Clap your hands one good time for the glory of the Lord. Just really quickly on next Sunday, we're going to have our Dominion Seed Vows. We have the cards already in production. And so on next Sunday, what we're going to do is we're going to anoint you. We're going to anoint the cards. Um, and so we're going to prepare our vow. When are we bringing that vow? For what? Easter Sunday, right? Everybody say Easter Sunday. So next Sunday, I want you here in the house of the Lord. We're going to pray. We're going to anoint you, your family, your households, and you're going to take the cards. You don't have to put your name on them. Uh, but we are asking that you put the amount on there so we can know uh, what we are expecting. And I want you to get ready for one of the biggest harvests you ever had in your life before 2019 is over. Oh, you ought to do better than that. I say I want you to get ready for the biggest harvest you've ever had in your life. I want you to stand all over this place and receive the man of God, Bishop R.C. Blakes at this time. Oh, throw your arms around somebody closest to you and let them know how much you love them this morning. Praise the Lord. How's everybody doing? I bet, I, I bet you don't know how far God is getting ready to bring you. Touch your neighbor, tell him it's getting ready to blow your mind. Take your seats, my babies. Um, let's look at something today. I'm trying to make all three locations today. I have not done that in a while. So um, I got to move quickly. But there's a word from the Lord. And I want to also say this. Have we mentioned that women's revival is this week? Okay. The announcements ain't y'all got to reemphasize it, though. Yeah, new home, you got, they got to hear it five, six, seven times for it to sink in. So women's revival is this week. It's hot in here, y'all. Cut some air on for me, please. We, we spent a lot of money on this hair. I need some air. Um, women's revival is this week, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. We're also going to need to, Bishop Bolden, we're going to need to receive offering again because y'all kind of early today. Y'all normally pick it up this early? Y'all do? What you say? All right. Praise the Lord. Um, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and Wednesday night is here. Tuesday night is uptown. Thursday night is uptown. And I want you to be in attendance for, um, for women's revival. Also, by next Sunday, uh, if they don't have it set up this Sunday, um, knowing you all, we're going to have registration for our holy convocation, the Game Changer. I want um, massive participation from my churches this year. Thank you, sweetheart. You do such a fabulous job. Give my baby a hand. She is so faithful and just, just on, she's on the job. I want massive participation from my churches this year. Um, we, we're, we're going to the next level with it. And I can't do it without you. You know, I can, I can depend on people from all across the country, but the bottom line is you are my support system. You're my foundation. And um, I can't do it without you. And so I need you to understand that. Pastor gets out and all this stuff, but you all are my, you know, you, you're the rock that I stand on. Okay? And we, we, we work this together. Now let's look at something for a few minutes. I'm going, I'm going to teach this, and then I'm going to turn it back over into the hands of Bishop Bolden, and I'll see you all this week. Uh, three ways. I don't know if you, Do we have the PowerPoint for here, Elder Said? You never sent it? They never sent it? Okay. Well, well, let's just kind of do it old school. Get your pens and your pencils or something to write with. Three ways the enemy deceives us are three signs of satanic deception. Uh, because we're living in a day and time, we're living in an age when um, Satan is deceiving the saints. You know, like, like right now we have, we have this thing going on in the world where our black men are buying into this gospel, this doctrine, if you would, that we are the people of God because we're black. And the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him. That's book, isn't it? You're not, you're not going to make it in. You're not the people of God. I need y'all quiet now. 
That's my babies. Give, give us some candy. My baby said, give me some candy. Now shut up. You're not going to make it in just because you're black or because of ethnicity. Jesus, you, you got to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now that kind of, that kind of teaching appeals to you as a black man. Because when you look at uh, police brutality and the, uh, the, you know, the ridiculous rates of incarceration of black men as opposed to any other peoples on the planet, uh, when you look at how you know, we can't get jobs and how we're underpaid and all that kind of stuff, as a black man, it makes you angry. So when somebody comes with a doctrine that says, because you're a black man, you have a special place with God, it's easy for you to have a, a reverse sense of racism or superiority. But it ain't Bible. It's deception. So we're living in a day and time when the world is deceived. In 1 Peter 5 and 8, he says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, uh, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. One thing I learned about a roaring lion from watching the nature shows is that when a lion is roaring, he's not really trying to attack. He's trying to scare. And so when the Bible calls Satan a roaring lion, it simply means that he is in a posture where he's trying to scare you into self-destruction. Y'all with me? So the text is discussing the fact that Satan is, is constantly seeking to disrupt our lives of righteousness. And his full-time job is to deceive us, watch this, into abandoning our faith, abandoning our consecration, and abandoning our covenant commitments. That's his, that's his whole agenda, is to deceive you, deceive me, deceive us, into abandoning our faith, our consecration, and our covenant commitments. You know, uh, he'll make you take marriage, for instance, lightly. He'll, he'll make you, he'll make you, um, uh, he'll make you dishonor your, your marital vows. You're all on your job flirting with people, and you know you're married. Some of y'all all up in church winking at people. And you know you're married. You're deceived. The enemy has brought you so low that you don't even respect holy vows. And I ain't judging you because I've been there. You know, I think I'm probably the worst sinner in here. But I'm also a witness of how God can deliver you. Set you free. Now, watch this. In Job 1, 6 through 11, he says, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Aren't you that neighbor? Tell him, devil up in here right now. <laughs> and the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? That there's none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that fears God and avoids evil. That's what that word escheweth means. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for nothing? Or hast thou not made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. He's perfect and upright because you've done a whole lot for him. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath and he will curse thee to thy face. See, that's Satan's agenda in deceiving you is to bring you to a place where you will dishonor God. Where you will embarrass God. Now, Satan's desired, desired impact in deception is this. He wants to dim the light of Christ in the earth because we are the what? Light of the world. Do y'all know the Bible up in here? Oh, let's try it one more time. We are the what? Light of the world. Number two, he wants to rob you of your peace. See, you can't get out of sync with God and maintain your peace. 
Whenever you start finding yourself in a position where your peace Huh? Where, where that inner peace is disrupted, you don't need to look outside trying to figure out what, what's wrong with him or what's wrong with her or what's wrong with them. You need to look inside because when your peace comes up short, you know what that's an indication of? You have grieved the Holy Spirit, and when you grieve the Holy Spirit, he grieves you back. Third thing that he desires to do through deception is to break your fellowship with God. See, your relationship with God, some folks say you can lose your salvation, but, you know, teach his own. The one I got, you don't lose it. Mm -mm. Because when you read the parable of that prodigal son, uh, he, he leaves his daddy's house, he goes into a far country, he lives riotously, spends all, but the whole while he's over there in that far country, carrying, behaving like a fool, he's still the son. His relationship was never impacted. It was his fellowship. But then the Bible says he came to himself. And when he came to himself, he turned around, which means he what? Repented. And he moved back to his daddy's house. And his father received him and restored his fellowship. Put a ring on his hand. Put a robe on him. And had a party for his return. Satan wants to break your fellowship with God. And I'm going to tell you something. You don't want to wake up in the morning and not be able to feel God. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. You don't want to wake up in the morning and not know that God is alive and well and y'all connected. What did David say? Just don't take your joy from it. And then he, then he, he wants to kidnap your witness. See? You ain't got no witness. Devil, devil wants to deceive you, pull you into a life that is um, less than righteous so that um, he can kidnap your witness so that you have no witness in the earth. You'll have no um, influence, no righteous influence. See, that's why most saints can't win souls. It's because even on your job, you don't have no righteous influence. You come up in here and you do all of that, make all that noise, but you live in a life outside of here that doesn't model what you carrying on up in here, so ain't nobody listening to you. You can't influence nobody. Most saints will live a lifetime and won't be responsible for one soul because you've never lived a life that represents your lifestyle is um, subtracting from your message. You talk in Jesus, but you live in worldly. Because you're what? Deceived. You're deceived. Okay. So Satan now, Satan doesn't usually tempt us with such obvious tactics. He usually uses subtle and stealth-like tactics. In Genesis 3 and 1, the Bible says, even in the beginning, in his first encounter with mankind, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, yea, hath God said, he's twisting the word around because he's what? Subtle. See, Satan's sitting, uh, well, I ain't gonna say, some of y'all Satan may be sitting next to you now. Yeah, come up in there with that smooth talk, that church talk, you know. Yeah, you know, you know, uh, sister, praise God, sister. Yeah, don't you just love Pastor Blaze? Yes, you know, I um, think you'd like to get a little coffee after yeah, like I told him uptown, I'm messing up somebody's game right now. <laughs> now. Now, three things I want to give you, and then I'm done. Signs that we are in deception mode. You know that you're, you're in, a, in deception mode when your heart gets hardened towards your leadership. When your heart begins to get hardened towards your leadership, you're in deception mode. And this is something I live with every day as a pastor. I hear people talk about abandonment issues, but ain't nobody, nobody's more abandoned than a pastor. And most of the time for no known reason. But what happens is Satan gets into the minds of people and he, he disrupts your synergy with the one that God has anointed to speak into your life. See, you can go all over the city, you can go all over the country and find preachers, but you got to know who's anointed to be your pastor. 
I'm going to say that one more time. You can go all over the city. You can find there are great preachers all over the city, great preachers. Some are much greater preachers than I am. But you got to know who's anointed to speak into your life. And the person that's anointed to speak into your life, when they talk, there's something that comes alive in you. When they talk, you can see it. You can get it. Watch this. And you can apply it. And you see the fruit from it. But the devil gets in the middle of that relationship between you and I. You hear something on the parking lot or you go to your job. Somebody has never even met me. Plant a seed in your mind and you come back up in here Sunday looking at me sideways. <laughs> and your heart becomes hardened against your shepherd. That God's anointed to speak into your life. And uh, look what the Bible says in Hebrews 13, 17. Obey your spiritual leaders and submit to them, recognizing their authority over you. For they are keeping watch over your souls and continually guarding your spiritual welfare as those who will give an account of their stewardship of you. Let them do this with joy and not with grief and groans, for this would be of no benefit to you. In other words... The deposit that God will send through your shepherd to make into your life, you won't be able to receive. Yeah. Now, you, you, you know you're in this mode when you move into that place of rebellion. You know, what do you mean by that? Well, pastor said, okay, I want y'all to do X, Y, Z. And you hunch and you, I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't doing nothing. I ain't doing nothing. You doing it? You doing it? I ain't doing nothing. That's going to say what he want. I ain't, I ain't supporting no game changer. I ain't tiring. I ain't coming to no Bible study. He don't be here most time nowhere. I ain't, I ain't doing nothing. That Negro got nerve enough to be asking me to come out here. I ain't doing nothing. That's rebellion, man. That's rebellion. That's rebellion. And some of y'all be calling me, you know. If I wasn't on that thing, I'd tell you what. I know y'all be calling me, but you know what you call me. You're in rebellion. See, and the reason I know this is because I had a pastor. His name was Robert Charles Blake Sr. And the devil used to always try to get in my head and mess me up with my pastor. Because he would say stuff I didn't like. Number one, if you got a pastor that's saying everything you like, you ain't got a pastor. That's the first thing. I don't want to sit up in no church every week with a man telling me everything I want to hear. That ain't no pastor. That's a politician. I need somebody that's going to tell me I need to stop shacking up and getting married. I need somebody to tell me I need to get out of the bed with all these people I'm not married to. I need somebody to tell me I need to stay out of that casino and get my money together. Okay, praise the Lord. That's moving on. Number two, I only have three. You develop an indifference to spiritual principles. You just don't care no more. You know that you're in deception mode. When it just don't matter if you go to church or not. You know, you, know, you just don't care. You, you become a part-time church attender. Most, most of the members of our ministry are part-time church attenders. There was a time when we had a great core of full-time um, church members partners, whatever you want to call them. But most, most of y'all are part-timers now because you got to go to the Voodoo Fest, you got to go to the Mardi Gras, you got to go to the Saints game, you got to go to the Pelicans, you got to go to the Second Line, you got to go to all of this stuff that you put before God. Come on, somebody. And then most of y'all don't tithe. Because you got to give your money to the AKAs, you got to take care of your alma mater, you, you, you got all of this stuff that has no bearing on your eternal soul. You got all of this stuff that's not going to be able to help you when your family falling apart or the doctor's giving you a report that you can't understand and the power of God got to step into your life. And you putting all of that stuff ahead of God. And don't tell me about how you love God. Your love for God is going to be reflected in how you handle your fellowship. You develop an indifference to spiritual things. You don't pray no more. Listen to the music you're listening to. You can ride up and down the street and listen to MFs and all of this Bs and all this stuff all day long. And it doesn't even impact you. You don't even feel strange about listening to that kind of garbage. You ain't worshiping. 
The glory of God can fall in this place. You sitting there hold, folding your arms, chewing gum, because now you have an indifference to spiritual things. And in Malachi 3 and 7, he says, Yet from the days of your fathers, ye have turned away from my statutes and ordinances and have not kept them. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. You got to come out of this deception mode. The enemy, number one, he hardens your heart towards your leadership. Number two, he gives you an indifference to spiritual principles. And number three, and finally, you develop an increased desire for sensual things. Your mind stayed on sex, lust, money. You know, that's all you think about all day long. You, 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 you have an increased appetite for things sensual, see. I was, uh, I, was, I was correcting some of these young men in, you know, that called me their spiritual father, and they want to use that occasion to slide up next to women. Ne Negroes supposed to be preachers. And, and you're going to use that occasion. Yeah, you know, R.C. Blake, that's my spiritual father. Then they get next to a woman, get her in bed, and then the woman, number one, you should have called me when the Negro walked up on you talking about spiritual father. You gonna wait till the Negro got you in bed and broke your heart and all this kind of stuff. Then you're gonna come calling me them, uh, your son. <laughs> I don't even know this man. What are you talking about, my son? And I, I said, now, you know, next time one of these boys inbox y'all, DM you, and that's for y'all too. Even Negroes in this church. Uh, you know, we don't allow no men to get out of place with women in here. You, you up in here and a man, a man is married, getting out of his way with you in any kind of way, you supposed to let me know that. You ain't supposed to be going around, uh, you know, uh, somebody in your DMs, you supposed to take a picture of that and you supposed to send that to me. Somebody up in this church that's, that's getting on your nerve, won't leave you alone, you supposed to say, Pastor, I got to holler at you. I'm going to take a second before I get on the airplane to listen to what you got to say. Because we don't have no, no sensual environment up in here. You're not going to be up in here with your flesh all out of control, especially not as a preacher. If you're a preacher and your flesh is out of control, you don't need to stand in the pulpit. You need to sit down until you get delivered. Am I helping anybody here? That's for the babes. That's not for nobody wearing no collars. But you know that you're in deception mode when there's an increase Desire for things sensual. You can't even think about spiritual stuff no more. Holiness not even on your agenda. See? Mighty quiet in this Holy Ghost church. Let me, let me shut it. I'm shutting it down. Y'all better be glad I got to try to get to Houston. I would sit here and work on this to about 1030. Hallelujah. Jude 1, 17 through 19 says, But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I was saying the men, but now, you know, sometimes the women be uh, running the brothers down too. If y'all got some of these rough women up in there, let me know, brothers. <laughs> the women are as aggressive as the men now. Hallelujah. I ain't get a whole lot of amens on that. You notice how I got a lot of amens when I talked about the brothers? Brothers, y'all got to say amen for me now. Come on, say amen. amen. Thank you. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord. They got some aggressive women, man. Wow. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves sensual, having not the spirit. You know that you're in deception mode when your thoughts and your mind becomes overly sensual and all you can think about is, is sex, money, things, nothing spiritual. You're in deception mode because you know that ends in a place of despair. It ends in a place of death. That ain't, that ain't going nowhere. That ain't going nowhere. When, when the devil gets through with you, he's going to run you right off the cliff. If you don't get a hold of yourself and really come back to yourself, the devil running you until he runs you right off the cliff. 
And look, here's the biblical response to satanic deception. James 4, 7 through 10. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Now you know what he's, when he says humble yourselves? There's a lot of teaching I left on the table here. It really speaks of the discipline of fasting. That's the purpose of fasting. is to humble the flesh and to bring the flesh back in sync with the spirit. Fasting is not to starve the body, it's to starve the flesh so that the flesh no longer has control over your decisions. When you find yourself out of sync spiritually, where you carry it away with all of these lusts and all of these desires, you need to shut it down with a fast. And allow the Lord to synchronize your spirit, your soul, and your flesh. So your spirit comes back into a place where it's in control of the show again. And you bind the works of the devil. Stand into your people. I want you, if you don't mind, just turn to that person closest to you. Just stand into your feet. Everybody, stand to your feet, stand to your feet. Just turn to that person closest to you and just tell them, I'm praying for you. That your faith fail not. Come on, look at me now. Tell them Satan desires to sift you as though you were weak, but I'm praying for you. I love y'all. Bishop Bolden. Come on, give God great praise today. As you're standing, maybe there's someone here who wants to receive the Lord Jesus Christ today. This is your opportunity. This is your moment after having heard the word of God. Something in your heart, God has stirred, has provoked, has pricked in your spirit. And you said, I want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. This is your moment. If you're here, why don't you come from wherever you are right now? Somebody next to you is praying for you. They believe in God for your salvation. The elders are coming. They're ready to pray with you and just stand in agreement with you. If you're here, maybe you're a backslider. Maybe you've walked away from God and you've already concluded that God could not possibly want anything else to do with somebody like you. But I want to tell you that God's love is everlasting. And if you're in this room today, you have not messed up so badly that God won't receive you back. If you're here, would you come? Thirdly, maybe you can say, I have a relationship. I love God, but I need a church home. And you got up this morning and the spirit told you specifically, this is the place I want you to be a part of. I want you to join. I want you to partner with. And if you are here, would you come from wherever you are all around this sanctuary? Come on, why not make the devil out of a liar? He didn't mind you coming to church. He just doesn't want church to come alive in you. And if you're here this morning and you've heard the voice of God and you know God saying, this is the day, this is the moment for me to surrender my all to him. Would you come right now? Come on. Just check down your road. Somebody really needs to make a decision for Jesus Christ and just tell them if you want to go, I'll walk with you this morning. I'm telling you, I, your soul is that important to me that I will walk with you hallelujah would you clap your hands if you know you're saved and glad about it you may be seated in the presence of the lord uh, we're going to do a couple of things really quickly first of all i want to those of you who um, need to tithe or give and you came after the offertory period uh, slip your hands up the ushers will serve you and then you can uh, bring your seed and place it here on the altar if you're tithing thank you uh, those who have not, thank you. We need envelopes over to my right. And we're going to do that quickly. And um, those who came in after the offering, um, we're not tied to a strict program. Sometimes we have to make adjustments. You know how a quarterback gets in the huddle and calls an audible. They thought they were going to do one play. And so that's what we have to do sometimes, uh, depending on schedules, depending on when Bishop is coming or not. So we had to make an audible relative to the offering. But those who need to give and those who are tithers, Lift your hand up and uh, our staff will serve you. Thank you so much uh, for your giving. At this time, we are getting ready. I do want to, before we go into the Lord's Supper, we're going to do that. Elder, you can come now. Uh, I want to thank God. Sister Weber is back in the house of the Lord this morning. Would you help me thank the Lord? Come on, church. You can do better than that. We pray and pray and the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous 
avail it much and so we're glad to have you in the house of the lord at this time we are preparing for holy communion and you can as soon as you receive your communion and we've ended and you've drank you are free to uh, leave you are the benediction is already pronounced on your life uh, do not forget Wednesday um, night, the women's revival. We need as many of you that can to be here on Wednesday. Also, um, I told them on Wednesday, but my new book came out this week. And uh, let me see that right quick, right quick, right quick. It's, it's going bananas online and Amazon, all that kind of stuff. And I got some copies here today. They're over there. If you want a copy, I'll come over and sign them. They're only $15, but they are blessing the world, literally. They're moving way faster uh, than I anticipated. But that's what God will do when you honor the Lord. God will expedite things in your life. At this time, prepare your hearts and mind. We're going to receive the Lord's Supper. Amen. Let us begin. Let's declare that death could not hold your time. Cause you are the risen king. You are the risen king. What an awesome day on this Sunday morning to come together to remember that Jesus died so that we could live. What an awesome day. We come here to remember what he has done for us on the cross. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 11, 27 through 29, wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, that you have promised to hear the prayers and petitions of your servants and to nourish us with the body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. Help us to prepare our hearts as to partake of the bread and wine, which are the two beautiful symbols of Christ's body, broken for me, and his precious blood shed for me. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, and yet you stoop down to save a wretch like us. 
And so we bow our heads in homage before you in grateful remembrance of your body, broken and your blood shed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Bible says in verse 24, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us eat together, but let us do in remembrance of him. And as we raise the cup, after the same manner, also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as often as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us drink together, but let us do it in remembrance of him. Amen. Amen. This includes your commun our communion service. 